Alright guys, what we got here is a fletching beam in our frame. Fletching beam is just some old 2x4s and saplings that I found in the river. Nailed them together. Bottom here is just a rectangle. Got two uprights coming up. And then I just have, have some bracing around here just to hold it in place, you know. Just a 2x4 I found floating in the river. And on top here I just nailed a piece of poplar round on here with a uh, split down it. Split in half poplar round. Nailed it from this side here. If you're going to use this method, see how my plank's wearing out down here? You want to make sure you keep an eye for nail points sticking through to mess your draw knife edge up. Got a hole right here in the bottom of our fleshing beam. I like to drive a stake into the ground through it. Kind of holds it in place, you know. Put a couple logs on it or something. Alright guys, something else that comes in handy here for your fleshing and de-hairing process here. I just have an old shower liner right here, old shower curtain liner. And I usually just open it up and spread it out under my fleshing beam here where I'm working. And that's just to catch any meat particles or anything like that, you know. Easier cleanup, so good to have there. Alright, so just some hand tools here that come in handy. If you decide to tan you a hide or something like that would be a draw knife. This is a regular old draw knife. It has a chisel grind on it. Nothing special about that. You want to make sure they're kind of dull. I'm pushing down pretty good on this. It's not cutting me. It's not cutting into me at all. So You want it dull so it don't cut your hide up. Right here is the same thing. This is just a piece of, an old, of old uh, oak, I think, or hickory. Hardwood, nonetheless. I just got kind of a sharp edge on it here. This is also a fleshing tool or de-hairing tool. They work. Um, not as well as your draw knife, obviously, but that'll work. I've used them. Any knife, sharp knife there, just to cut off little pieces or whatnot. Ivory soap. This will be good for your uh, beginner. If you're going to start tanning hides and you're a beginner, this will be a good tanning solution to use here. Ivory soap. We'll talk about that later on throughout the tanning process. Just a regular pack of ivory soap here. Nothing special. Original ivory soap. So, right here we just got a couple of bracing stones here. I'll take it on my grain side once we're done softening and everything. Take these and run over my grain side a few times. This is a piece of hummus, uh, pumice stone right here. These are just sandstone. Different, uh, different coarseness on it right there. More equipment here that would come in handy for tanning. A metal bucket. If you're going to collect your ashes from a barbecue sack, um, I found that most of them really have no problem giving you their ashes. They're just throwing them away, so if you call up there and talk to someone, you'll probably get you some. Got me a metal bucket to go get them. A strainer here. I'll just take my ashes and put in it. Sift it through to get my large chunks of um, charcoal out of there, which is really not necessary, but I like to do that anyway because it takes up a lot of the volume. I mean, uh, this charred stuff here takes up a lot of volume in your bucket, so that helps out there. A few extra buckets here just for cleaning up, you know, put all your hair particles or whatnot, your fleshing particles in there. Can your hides in these. And then you want a container here that stays dry. I just got an old cooler here. Wasn't being used, so I started using it for this. Uh, this is my sifted through ashes here. That's for the de-herring process there. De-graining process or whatnot. Talk about that later on. Guys, what I got here is just an old hickory stick, piece of a hickory sapling right there. It's about chest high on me. What I'll do is just come, just 
dab it into the ground somewhere, make a hole for it. And what I'll use this for is just to, to break my hide here. Alright guys, so this just breaks the fibers of the hide here. If it dries up without you stretching it, they kind of want to lock in together real tight and make a tight bond. So I just do this right here to break them fibers and this softens your hide. I just roll over it like that. Alright guys, so what I got here is just a rack. If you're going to make it some raw hide, this is the way you can stretch your hide out on this rack. Stretch it out nice and flat for it to dry. I just got two uprights, one here, one here, and then one across the bottom, and then one across the top here. And that's just to stick your hide in and tie it up. Lace around your hide there and pull it tight. another rack system there a little simpler just to stretch your hide on for drying for your raw hide all right guys something else that'll come in handy for uh, working with your hides um, your buckskin in particular is a smoker of some sort this is what I use to smoke my hides with put my skirt over this piece here you know over the chimney stack put my wood in here all this is is a, it's a paint thinner bucket about five gallons worth Got an access hole here. Just got the chimney in, and that's it. I mean, it's like a big rocket stove, pretty much. So, we'll talk about this in our punk wood a little bit later on in the uh, final video of our buckskin series. That's where we're going to be using it at. So, make sure you check that out, guys.